One of the nice features about the Mini 5 Pro, which was introduced from the Mavic 4, although going back to the DJI Spark, it was on that as well. And that's dynamic home points. That's what today's video is all about. Let's do this. So hello and welcome once again uh, to the channel on this very fine day here in the UK, dodging the rain as we always do. So if there's some beginner flyers out there, this video might be useful for you. And for those that don't know how, how dynamic home points work, then this is the video for you. Now there is a caveat to this because uh, there is a little thing that you need to remember and I'll show you that in the video as we go along. So let's get straight into the video and show you exactly what it's all about. One of the best features of the Mini 5 Pro is the uh, dynamic home point and that's uh, the video that I'm going to do today. The weather's not been too kind but um, you can see those black clouds out there and we've got a little bit of a break in the weather. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, get the Mini 5 Pro up in the air and then what I intend to do is go through the process of setting up dynamic home points. So let's get this bird in the air. The first thing we're going to do is going to show you on the map. As you can see the um, home points marked with the with the yellow H, as you can see that on the screen recording. Obviously I'm using a, a camera recording as well. And then as we fly out, you notice there's a, a blue and a red line. If I just go to the left hand side. I covered this actually in a video um, quite a while back but I just thought I would just explain this on the Mini 5 Pro. So there's a couple of ways that we can set the uh, dynamic home point. If we go back into uh, the three dots and we come down here to update home point you can see just there there's a dynamic home point and what happens if we select OK home point updated it's, it's updated the, the home point and it's made it a, a, a blue H instead of a yellow H. So if we start to march down the field a little bit, you'll notice that the home point is moving dynamically. So when it's blue, that's a dynamic home point. And what we need to do is make sure that when you've set the dynamic home point that it's not going to go back to the original takeoff point now there's no reference on the map other than from where that blue line started that was the original home point but what happens now is if we want to return this to the home point or the new dynamic home point let me just put my bag down Move the camera up a little bit. So if we initiate return to home, I don't know whether you noticed on the side just here as well that the return to home has gone blue as well as uh, the arrow that's representing the home point as well. That's now gone blue. So I'm just going to fly it out a little bit further. Now if I um, hit the return to home button which is this one just here what's going to happen is, to home. is that's going to return to the home point the dynamic home point but it's not actually going to land what it should do is it should come above us and then it should set itself to hover and that's nothing to do with how you've got your settings set I can just try and switch into the, the camera mode. It's now actually hovering above us. And the reason it does this is it has no idea 
of where that dynamic home point is, what the terrain is. Now I know I'm in a field, if I just um, put the camera down, you can see that I'm still in a field and it's showing the, the dynamic home point and it's hovering, it's waiting for an input. So basically what's happening is, if you was to fly over water on a boat, or you was uh, traveling um, on your bike and it's dynamically updating the home point, it doesn't know where actually where you are, what the terrain is. You might, might have gone through some woods, or like I say, if you're on a boat, on a lake or something like that, you don't want it to land on the water. So it basically waits for a, an input from you. I'm just gonna bring the drone down now. There it is. <clears throat> and it's waiting for me to, to land it. Just gonna um, put it up out of the way a minute. Flick back to the three dots and show you one of the other things that you can do. So rather than having a dynamic home point, you, you can go back to static home point and then update it to the controller. Home point updated. So if we look down now, that's where the home point is. If we look on the map, you can see that that's now a static home point of where the dynamic home point was. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna walk up the field, back up to where we started from. And you should notice that that controller icon will move, which it is doing. It should be following me to where we originally took off from, which was somewhere around here. So you can see there's a distance between the, the home point and the controller now, which you can see that on the screen. And we can do, basically, we can go back in and we can update the home point through here once again, or what you can do, is if we can cancel this, is you can actually update the home point with this little button just here on the side. We can go update home point, it gives you the same options. So I'm gonna update it to the controller once again. You can see it's gonna move it to where I'm stood. Home point updated. So that's another way of doing, uh, updating your home point, which was a great feature that DJI brought in, having it updated to your controller and I think that's a fantastic way of um, keeping your home point updated to wherever you are you can either do it dynamically or you can do it statically as I've just showed you by updating it to the controller's position right let's get it landed and I think we'll call that one done so there we go that's dynamic home points that's how it works um, I think it's a quite a good feature as I said earlier in the video if you're using a bike or a car and you want to track your your home point dynamically uh, it's a great feature so you've got the two you've got the the dynamic home point and you've got the static home point and hopefully in the video it showed you exactly what it was all about so if you found the video useful and you've got something out of it as always don't forget give us the old thumbs up and if you're new around here, why don't you consider subscribing, dinging the dong and all the rest of it that goes with it. I'm sure you know me by now. And you might like to watch those couple of videos I've chosen for you over there. And if you do, I shall see you over there. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.